Greetings everybody and thank you for joining. In this tutorial we're going to take a look at a dynamic schedule. Now there's two different ways you can approach a dynamic schedule. In this particular demo we're going to look at a, the basic way. We're going to run the dynamic schedule for a static parameter value but we're going to deliver it to a fluctuating list of recipients. So why on earth would I use a dynamic schedule? Well, the best way is to give you an example. Say Robert has over 100 stores and he needs to deliver a report to each store. Deliver a report to each store. The report's not dynamic in any sense. It's a static report, but the list of store managers changes. Some stores might have a manager one day and maybe it might change. So what he needs is a schedule that's going to deliver a static report to a fluctuating list of recipients. And that's why you might want to take a look at a dynamic schedule. So first, we'll select dynamic schedule from our list of available schedules. And then we'll select the report that we need to run. I'll select my sample report with a parameter. You'll name the schedule, and then you'll add a description. You can also add keywords, so that way it makes it easier to search. Once you're ready, click Next. First, you have to determine the destination, as in where it's going to go. You can choose either disk, email, fax, FTP, printer, SharePoint, or text message. Let's do an email. Next, you also have to determine the timing. Let's have this run every Sunday at 11 p.m. We can run this schedule enabled, so it'll run on that particular schedule every Sunday at 11, or we can actually disable it and just run it on demand. We'll leave it enabled. Okay, in this particular case, I'm just going to be delivering a static report. So I'll select what my key, what the parameter that I'm going to be using. And then also, down here, I'll select the particular parameters that the report needs to run for. So now I'm going to deliver a static report for Alfred's Funderkist to the fluctuating list of uh, recipients. Click Next. Alright, now this is the linking section. You could either use a static destination, which meaning the list won't fluctuate, uh, the list of recipients won't fluctuate, rather it's just going to go to a disk drive. In this particular case, we actually want to send it to a fluctuating list of recipients. So we'll select the particular DSN that holds all of my email addresses. We'll connect to it. And CRD will interrogate the database for the list of fields that we need. So let's find in my database where my email addresses are. I have to select my key parameter as well. Notice that, they'll, that the values for the key parameter will have need to match the values in your report. The field name doesn't necessarily matter, just that the values have to match in order for us to appropriately compare the email addresses. And finally, you select the column in your table that holds the email address. If you want to be sure that you did it right, you can even just run a quick test and just type in one of the parameter values. And there it is. So as you see, after typing one of the values, an email address shows up. So I did my linking right. Click Next. Now it's time to set up the destination. 
As we said earlier, this is a fluctuating list of recipients. We've already established our database link earlier, so as you see, there's no two field here. We already know who it's going to, as we set up in the previous window. If you want to, on an optional basis, you can add in a CC field, a BCC field, or in, you know, things like that. You can also add a subject line. And then you can customize the message as you need. Now what's great about a dynamic schedule, you can actually customize fields within the email. So say you want to add a bit of a personal touch and you want to add, I don't know, the person's first name. By using your dynamic inserts found in your inserts windows here, we can suck out the fields from that table we linked to and insert them directly in the email address. So let's say we want to put the person's name. Just simply drag it and drop it in the email body. Add a comma for good grammar and a nice middle message. So now what we've just done, we've customized the email so that it actually has that person's name. They're going to be getting a report just for them. Once you're happy with your email, click Next. Also make sure you select the format of the report as well. Alright, once you're happy with all the destinations that you want to send to, click Next. You can handle all of your database logins here. The resume with cache data option is a very powerful option that enables you to pick up where you left off in case the schedule errors or fails at any point. We'll make better use of this in the advanced tutorial. And also you can use snapshots which we'll talk about later. The software, as always, has an element of self-healing, so if the schedule errors, you can have it retry up to a certain number of times. You can also check to see if a report is blank, and if that report's coming back blank, you can ignore it or perform any number of actions off the back of it. And finally, you can run any custom task off the back of this, such as updating a database record or sending an email notification to an administrator. So once you're happy with your dynamic schedule, click Finish. As you see, the schedule will be listed here, and all you have to do, you can right-click on it to review its properties and make changes accordingly. You can disable it if you don't want it to run anymore, or you can execute it on demand. Well, what we've done is we've created a very simple dynamic schedule that's going to deliver a static report to a fluctuating list of recipients. Thank you very much for joining. Bye.